Hey guys, hope you're all well. Right, part two of the battered tank. Or is it hammered? I don't know. It's, it's a mess, I know that. Right, I've had a change of plan. There's a thing. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Right, I've been having a good think about this. I've been off doing other things for a few days. Uh, so, in between all that, I've been having a right think about this. The initial plan was to try and get all this mess. You can see that. Well, you've seen it before. The initial plan was to try and get all that mess dressed out. Now, what I think's happened to this tank I don't know if I explained this in part one. I ain't even edited that yet. <laughs> but I'm going to edit these together and get them out, sort of one after the other. Um, what I think's gone on with this, it's been seeping out the seams because it's not rotten. Yes, it's got a bit of surface on there, but it's not rotten. I think it's been seeping out the weld seam or something along them lines. And someone's tried to repair it, as in MIG welding, which ain't a problem if you've got your settings right and you're very, very careful doing little bits at a time. And I think they've just got out of the depth with it. They've probably welded a bit, got the welder set to eye, blew a hole in it, tried to weld that up and chased a hole across. The material started buckling out of shape. They've tried turning to brazing, which is really a no-no because you've got heat on there constantly and you're trying to you know bring it up to temperature to get your brazing in which is going to buckle the hell out of the tank so i think that's what's happened it started off with a little leak and they've just got into one big mess with it chasing their errors across blowing holes and buckling it all up so yeah as you know it's ended up in a right mess so as this is, it is an original Enfield tank. It would have gone on a rigid Enfield, sort of wartime, pre-war, whatever. But as it's going on a custom bike, I don't think it matters at this point if I chop and change it a little bit. And I think it'll still look all right. So the plan now I'll show you in a minute where it sat on the bike. The plan now, I think I'm going to reduce the depth of the tank because it sits really low on the bike anyway. Compared to the later Enfield tank, it hides quite a lot at the top of the engine. But it seems to on this bike anyway, where it would sit. So I think... I'm going to reduce the depth of the tank and take all that damage off. Then I'm not going to put bother putting this tunnel back in because there'd be a lot of chopping and changing. And I think it would make more sense if I just made a complete new tunnel for it and base. Yeah, I think it would probably take me just as much time to make this one fit and what it would just to do it all new. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. The only downside of that, I was gonna put knee pads on it. I won't be able to do that. It's, that's no biggie, that's no big issue. We'll just do something nice with the paintwork in that area. All I'll have to do is do something about where the knee pads fitted, which again is no major problem. And I think, I think it'll look all right. But hey, if I change my mind and I've repaired all this tank, maybe it'll suit a, uh, another bike down the line somewhere, you know, not necessarily an Enfield, obviously. If it doesn't look all right on one in my books, it may look good on something else. And I'll hang it up till that time comes. So yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna go with it. Let's put it on the bike, see what, uh, see what you think. So, as you can see, 
the tunnel. Past the cables. It sits really, really low. It, it is a lot, well, it seems to be a lot lower. That ain't even all the way down. That's caught on something. Well, I think it's sat on top of the engine a bit. So, oops, smash the microphone up the bike. Yeah, that's actually sitting on top of the engine. It is. Because obviously, the engine would have been slightly different in the, in the, in the bike that this tank would have gone on. So, on this one, it's actually sitting on the engine. So, I would have had to mount the tank higher anyway if we kept it at this depth. So, I think it's possibly an all right route to go down. Let's put the shell on so you can see that. As you know, the damage is worse on one side than the other. This is the worst side. And it is really bad, to be fair. And I think trying to get all that brass out, it's just gonna be so much trouble. And probably at the end of the day, it'll end up not being able to save it. So I think we're gonna cut it off, definitely. Anyway. Obviously it will sit off the frame a tiny bit. Not much. And yeah, and the engine does disappear right up in there. So I think there's about, probably about inch and a quarter, inch and a half that would need to be zipped off the bottom there, which will put us quite close to the mounting point of the knee pad. So we'll dress all that in and get rid of that. And let's stick some black tape on. Might help if I lower the camera so you can see it. A line, I'm sort of looking at it. Right, where's some black tape? Just to give you an idea. So obviously the other side's the worst bit. Oh, I reckon we're gonna end up. Obviously you wanna, I wanna keep the bottom sort of what would be parallel with the, the ground. So the top of that tape will be about where I cut it. So yeah, and it'll probably sit about a quarter of an inch higher so it ain't rattling against the frame when it's fitted. And we'll see a bit more engine. Because when all the engines are cleaned up, I put a lot of time in that, so it'd be nice to expose that work for everyone to see. I think it's going to be all right. But like I say, if I change my mind and I've done the tank, I've got a usable tank for something else. I've got nothing to lose because it's that bad. And it's a bit of a challenge. So let's just get on with it. Let's do it. Just take that off for now. I'm not cutting it to that long. We'll get it a bit more precise than that. This, what I'll have to do with this. Also, another thing, with this being lower at the back than this, we're not gonna have 
much tunnel in the way of the fuel being able to get round to both sides, eliminating having to have few, two, few, few, get your words out, fat boy, eliminating having to have two fuel taps, which is going to be better, I think. So we'll have to cut out one of these for the fuel tap. Yeah, the reason it had two fuel taps because obviously you'd have a lot of fuel trapped on one side if there wasn't two. So you can just open the other tap and drain the other side of the tank. I'll say we're a lower tunnel, we can eliminate that. So there's one plus for doing it. So basically I'll cut one of them out and this is scrap. Save me cleaning all that snot off it, won't it? Let's put that to side for now. Right, the shell, another good thing about chopping it up, the shell's got some little dents here, there and everywhere. So I can dress them out from the inside. And then just tidy up what I've got and chop off what I don't want. I think we'll get the run the DA over it and see where all these little low spots are and attend to them first. Then we'll make the center of the tunnel and then we'll make the base. Let's see how it goes. We've got nothing to lose. <laughs> start with that one see where he is about there and if I just glance over in here with the DA let's get that that oh let me see where it is I'm still in a bit of a mess in here because I haven't finished stripping all the tons of the uh, tank sealer out of it which I will do, obviously, before it goes back together. So ignore the state of the inside of the tank first, because we're going to do the dents first. So if you can pick that out, I can see where to work on this now. And I guess leaving it messy like this, cleaning up these eye spots will let me see them easier but I didn't want to get it blasted where I normally go because I, I think I said that in my first video, it can actually distort something like this and it will be destroyed. I know you can get different media, I don't know, soda, vapor, coconut shells, Tinkerbell's toenails. Yes, I know all that. I just want to do this myself and just be in full control of what's happening with it. That is all. So yeah, I'm doing all the cleaning myself. Plus, you know, you have to get in the car, take it to where it's going, leave it with them. Get to tell you, they'll tell you they're really busy, can't have it for two weeks, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just, I'm doing it all myself. Right, let's do this dent. So to start with, I'm just going to very, very, very carefully go with the ball pin. And again, it's not an how to, I'm just, it's just how I go about things. And with anything like this, it's best to do tiny bits at a time. You don't have to whack it thinking it's metal, it's going to need a good whack. You'll be surprised how easy they start to move. And if you're just doing little bits at a time, you can keep checking the outside and keep going till you're about right. And it's very hard to get a camera shot, obviously. Let me try, try and do it. With the camera stuck up my backside, so you can uh, Maybe see what I'm doing. Yes, as you can see, it's still in a mess, but we'll sort that out. 
So we're going here. Literally just hit it on the ice box. You can keep checking the other side to see how it's coming out. It has a bit of a crease there, but I think it'll go. Sometimes you will go a bit too far, to, especially if it's a crease, sometimes you have to go out a bit to bring it back. Right, let's just shove the DO over that now and see if it's looking better. That's a lot better. And obviously I will be attending to all this terrible finish. When I'll do all that when the tank's actually back together. So that's where it was. We got that in shot? No. <laughs> that's where it was. And also if you've got strip lights, I've got strip lights up in the roof. They out picking out dents as well as you get the reflection of the strip light if the reflection goes wobbly you have a dent there right let's go for this one this is actually quite a big dent I don't know if you can make that out it's all that area bigger dents are harder get out like this so it's across there and a little one there look so let's go for this little one first them two gone now this one I don't know if you can pick it out it I should have a black marker really shouldn't I it's not up there idiot See my chart mark? About there, yeah. It literally is about that big. So I'll take a bit more work. For that one, we'll probably turn to the wooden mallet. You can hear that crackling away, it's my microphone bouncing around on me. I can see a crease in it first. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna change my mind from that. Go to this because just pulling the crease out may correct the larger dent. So let's try this first. Let's 
thing. It's not like me to drop anything, is it? Right, I'm going to use this one now. Because I'll see everything bloody goes in here. I know my hammers are probably not correct for beating panels up, but as you all know, I just work with what I've got in here. I think we'll try the mallet now. Where are you? Here it is. Oh, let's get that crease. Oh, I can see you. Oh, you're coming out. Okay. See up here, I can see the shape coming back, looking down at it. And we just got a little outy one there now. Getting closer. Let's glance over that with the DA. Yeah, it's getting closer. Let's turn the light out so you've got less glare. There's a bit of a crease just there. A couple of little high and lows here. And one there. So let's work on them. Right, for the crease, let's have a crack at this one. a bit it's no problem Right, I think I'm about there with that one. 
it may be hard for you to pick it out but uh, I will say this tank was chromed so you'll, dis you'll see sort of different colours in the material surface which on camera may look like dense I don't know but that it's pretty much flat again can't really feel anything there I'll say you'll see discoloration where the chrome was on the tank which I'm going to work on anyway to get all that tidied up but yeah I think we're pretty much there well, a couple of little really small ones now and on the other side and on the top there so what I'm going to do I'm just going to go off and work away on them you sort of get the idea where where I'm going with the dents and how I'll get them out so I'm going to just uh, pop the camera off get these sorted out and then I'll be back with you and I think we'll trim all this garbage off the bottom then then we should be getting somewhere close to a tank shelf that's usable anyway see you in a bit right we're getting there with the dressing up uh, I'm getting most of the little dents out now slowly but surely with the uh, collection of hammers and things uh, my next thing I was doing as I was getting the dents out is getting the chrome off now I know you could take this to the chromers get the process reversed pull it all off uh, that's quite a messy process normally you get it back and everything's absolutely red rusty uh, as I said before, we're trying to do all this sort of in-house, save the running around, and it's a bit of a challenge as well. So this side, I'm pretty much there. This side, I'm working on the dents still, slowly getting them out, and we've still got all the chrome on there. Uh, blasting from things I've had in the past doesn't really attack chrome it's such a such a tough surface when it's been chromed blasting only just bounces off it and you know probably if you've got that level of blasting which will fetch chrome off it will completely destroy the tank i've seen stuff as i've said before that's been blasted and it's just buckled the hell out of everything you might not think it does it but it does and to save that happening also is why I'm trying to do as much as I can myself. So we've sort of done one side of the top, removed the chrome, and as you can see that. So that's getting there. We've got a couple of dents here that I need to get out. And as you can see, the chrome, you can see that better with the light off. Let's see. I don't know. The chrome is sort of crazing where it's rusting and lifting off. Now, if, you know, you could probably run the risk of painting over that, but yeah, I don't want to run the risk. If I was 100% keeping this bike, yeah, maybe so, and if it lifts under the paint then it's my problem but you know if someone does twist my arm and wants to buy this bike at least we're doing it so they ain't going to get no trouble further down in the future so what i do to take the chrome off and you've got to be really really careful is just the grinder i've got a 36 grit disc in the grinder and basically very very carefully just go through the layer of chrome. You'll see it change color when you down to fresh metal. But oh, I don't know how many microns the chrome is. It, it's, it's, it's nothing. 
but it's such a careful thing to do to do it with a grinder because you know these ain't thick material anyway it's probably like trying to grind writing off a piece of paper <laughs> you really have got to be that careful so what I do is pass over it several times with the grind you'll see it coming away sometimes you'll get big flakes come off where it gets under it and rips big flakes of it off but we just want to get rid of all that crazing that you can see in this so I'll just do a little bit here with the grinder just just to show you but like I say I'm you choose your own way how you wish to do this paint over it by all means but damn good chance over time it's going to pop your paint off so let's have a crack with the grinder Right, that's the chrome off in that area. Now what I normally do now is go over again with the grinder, but really slow. That's near enough. By doing it slow, it just makes the grinding marks finer and then your pad's wearing out. Just continue with a worn pad and it'll make it much more easier to dress up. I'll just try that. Oops. Where's that DA gone? There it is. Yeah, doing it slow and make them finer and the DA will drag the grinding marks out much easier. There we go. Yeah, I, I say, I know it's turned that off. I know it's time consuming. But it, at least it puts me in control of everything on the tank. No chance sending it out and having it damaged to, to the point where it won't be achievable to save it. Well, that's, I think it's going to be fine. So a bit of a dent there. I've got pretty much all the dents out of there. Which is good. So yeah. I'm probably going to make the tunnel now because this is something I can do when it's the tank's all back in one piece. That's not a problem. The insides might not look it, but I've got all the uh, just about all the the bad rust off on the inside. I know it's still a bit discoloured, but we haven't got to worry too much about that. At least all the bad stuff's gone out the road. There's no chance of contaminating the fuel and everything like that. It's a good idea if you're going to store a tank, is put oil in it. You don't have to fill it, just, I don't know, cup full of oil and swish it all around and hang it up and it'll be fine. I had an old BSA tank that had been hanging around for about 50 years. Inside of it was like brand new because someone had the thought to put oil in it. Well, this one weren't too bad, but I'm sure some of you have had some terrible experiences with tanks that are full of rust. Uh, the ones I've had full of rust, I normally use uh, what you call a vapour rust. You can buy it off eBay. It's, it, yes, it is a bit expensive, but it works. And it works really, really well. Basically just put in your tank. What I normally do is leave it for about a week and just swill it around now and again, probably once a day. I'll probably leave the tank like that on its side, just leave it upside down so it ain't pouring out the filler, leave it the right way up and just 
do that for about a week and that'll vapor us, your tank will be like brand new inside as long as it ain't like rotten about to rot through if it's just rush you want to get rid of that is good stuff all this vinegar thing and all these pro i don't bother with all that i really don't this stuff i use i know it works and i know it works well and also you can actually pop it back into the tub for a filter if there's any big chunks and you can use it again and again and again so you might think it's expensive but you can use it for several tanks before it, you know the product starts dying off a bit and then it's apparently environmentally friendly and you can just tip it down the drain. Says that on the side. So I'm just relaying to you what it says on there. Anyway, let's do the tunnel for this thing. So we're gonna form the tunnel. Then we'll trim these off. We might even trim this off first. And then we're going to make the side pieces to go back in. And hopefully we'll be all, all the junk will be gone and we'll be back to nice clean material to do all the welding. And we'll uh, get all this shaped up nicer. This is a bit battered. Same with that. Oh, that's a bit battered, but we'll pull all that back into line before we weld it up. But it's getting there. Real simple way of doing it is over a bit of tube. Let's see if I can get it started off the edge of this. When you've got all the proper equipment, jobs like this are far easier. <laughs> I'm just trying to show all you guys, like me, who got a shed full of rubbish. Let's give it a hug. It's going. So obviously if you do decide to put a new tunnel in your tank, you can sort of stop forming it wherever it's needed. If you've got a tank that's got to go over a lot of stuff that's hidden under the tank, you could probably stop at that point. Yes, again, I know there's equipment where you can shape things like this. I'm just showing you if you've got nothing. You watch you don't squeeze your head in there. Get in there. I think that's going to do it. If we look at the front, forget the back of it because that is completely out of shape. obviously correct all that so it fits the tube, not the tube, the sheet that we've just formed. Obviously there's going to be a hell of a lot to trim off. Let's move that tape. So these gaps 
should disappear if we get this top into shape and drop the tube further in. It should close them off a little bit. As you can see down here, the sides are touching. We've got this cut out here, which I'm going to try and form into the into the new tunnel because this allows for cable run from the whatever the clutch, the carburetor, stuff like that. So we'll definitely shape the tunnel back into this. But yeah. We'll just take a bit a bit out the top here. Because we sure don't want to be welding a gap up like that because all this area will end up going well it'll probably scrap the tank trying to build that uh, gap up all right i think yeah we'll dress that up so it doesn't matter if the tunnel sits deeper into the tank that doesn't matter at all because i've you know, we can make it look right on the bike when we get to that bit. And then before the tunnel goes on, I'll do all this damage here. And you see that side is coming along nicely. Then we'll chop all that junk off the bottom. Right, let's get at it. Yeah, as I get this a bit higher, this should start closing off. Then we can dress it up properly and it should all fit nice. Right, that's, uh, that's getting a bit closer. See, the, the gaps are quite small here now, but as obviously this tank was all over the place it still needs a bit of pulling around as in the shell as you can see i don't know if you can pick that out this side is out a lot more on that side i know this has got that bit cut out but i can manipulate that it's hard to do while well, trying to hold the camera but as I pull that down, it closes this gap off. So, right, let's get that back under there. So, what I'll be doing as I tack it up, I'll be pulling it all into shape and doing the tacks, which will start shutting these little gaps off. But uh, that little gap's not too bad. I could actually weld that up. So I think that's the front about where I want it. Obviously, we'll be trimming all this off when we get to that stage. But what I'm going to do now is the back, because that is still in a bit of a bad state. As you can see, it's all out of shape around here. So basically, as you've seen, when I took this apart, I had to sort of lever some of it, which ain't a problem. I know I can put it back into shape. And as we've still got to take the bottom off, I'm not too fussed about all this here because we're actually going to cut it off. So let's do a bit of work on this now. And try and pull that back into shape. As you can probably see now, that's off. It's a little bit chewed up. What we got? That'll do it. An old piston. I 
I'm not going too bad because it's going to come up quite a bit but at least we've got the ripple ripple smooth we've got that back a bit I think it's going to be it's going to be quite weak till we start getting the bottom attached back to it what I think I'm going to do now is make that cut and get all that rubbish off it like I say we're going to lose these knee pads but I, I'm, I think that's a small sacrifice to actually have this tank usable when I've cut the bottom off we'll sit it back on the bike over there and see what it looks like Yeah, so that's line that up and get this bit in the scrap bin. It's oh, all right. Let's see what we got here. Look. Look at that. Is it better with the light off? Probably. And that has just all burnt through on the inside. So, oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> There's just no way we could have done anything with that. That's just gone, look. The rotten. That bit. So with the, how that brass is, they've just tried chasing that along. And I bet it just kept blowing it away and blowing it away. And it just turned into one big mess. So now <clears throat> we back up to some good material well, we've still got that bit but that'll be easy I can dig this tiny bit of brass in there I can dig that out and we can get that back this side is pretty much spot on But we should have a nice little custom tank out of this hopefully hopefully we'll see a little bit more engine yeah I think it's going to be all right. You're not going to have the bulk of the rear end like you've seen at the moment, and you're not going to have the bulk of the usual front end that we put in them because we're going to go with the girders, which I'll hold Dan's girders up against it so you can see what I mean. So you're not going to have a big bulky front end on the bike. I'll do that and sit in the way, eh? Yeah. <laughs> So there's not going to be a big bulky front end on the bike. So I think a slim tan a slim tank like that is going to look all right. I think it will. But you know I'm like if I have any doubts, it'll be off. But. At least it's done and it's going to be usable. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to look all right on one of these. Got a nice brass uh, fuel cap for it. And like I said, we'll do a little scattering of brass on this. Not mad, because I, I don't like it when it gets a bit too much. I might even do like a solid fuel line on this and sort of spiral it into the carb. Again, just... 
I've got that many ideas rattling around in this empty head of mine. It, uh, it is keeping me awake. And also I've got uh, loads of ideas spinning around with Dan as well on ears. Anyway, let's finish the tunnel. The tunnel of love. Closer. This is where we're going to do that bit. We need to bring that in over here to sit into that. And obviously, that's where the cables will come out. Makes it quite easy with the tank having a flat bottom, which you had originally. It's just uh, it's just moved up slightly. That should do it. Come on, stop doing that. <laughs> Shall we try that again? Right, I'm gonna leave it locked. <laughs> I wanna mark this now so we can get this shape in it for the cable run. So I'm going to go there, down here actually on the tank, it's not the best shape. So I'm going to go right till it, it's the flat face again and belly this part of the tunnel out. Then we'll probably dress that part up to suit. As you can see that, so I'll end up grounding that off. So this is a bit more of a nice curve because you are going to see it, so we'll get it we'll get it better than what it was. That's a, just a rough guide for what we want to belly out. Uh, simple way to do that is a bit of flat bar. I can hear you going, what? <laughs> How's he going to do with a bit of flat bar? Right, I'll show you. It's not going to be flat for long. Put a curve in it. It's my exercise for the day.
and a little bit more. <laughs> You'll get there. I think that's going to do. Tell you what, I'm not going to bother cutting that. This is just temporary, by the way. Let me fire the old welder up. And one for good luck. Right, so we've curved that bar. That's just a temporary um, thing that it'll be breaking off. So basically that, where we've got that welded on, that will control the dish that we're gonna put into this to fit in here for the cable run. Because obviously there's plenty of space down the tunnel between frame tube and engine and everything else. So the cables, I've got plenty of room to come up that tunnel. It's just where they sort of splay out and go up to the handlebars and things. I know it probably really don't need it, but the shape's in the tank. So why not? We might as well get it like that. And then we can hit right on the edge to get a good radius. Because we're doing a big radius, it helps doing it with the mallet. Let's see how that looks. Cut to, ooh, it's getting that time of day where it's hard to get off the floor. We'll just chop into them tacks now. Now obviously this bit's gonna be on the inside of the tank, so we're not gonna see that but we'll still dress it up. There we go. So what we're going to try and do is work our way around the tank and do all this with minimal of gaps. Because gaps means more well, which means more heat, which is more chance of buckling the tank again. And please don't put in the comments, use your TIG. No, I don't feel confident with it enough yet. I've, I've been nigging since the day I was born. <laughs> so I feel comfortable with that while I'm doing this. I will get round to that TIG and I shall sit down with it and we'll be, we will, we will become best friends. I hope. Right, that's not bad at all. We haven't got much of a gap there at all. I can pretty much say that I'll be safe to weld. Feel the strength coming back into it now. Right, let's get to some muck off this bench. Where's thou brush? Pop 
the welder off a minute. There it is. Getting late, I'm dropping things. I'll be fine. <laughs> right, uh, skipping forward a day. I uh, I was working away last night. <clears throat> it was a long, long, long day, and I realised a battery gone in my microphone. And I don't know when it done it. So uh, I was going to try and squeeze this tank into two parts, but. I come up with another idea that uh, he's going to add a little bit more time to it. So this being part two, I uh, I managed to get all this welded in and the rear. So now we've got to get the base in on the next part. Part three. Part three again. The base in. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem because I was going to squeeze it into this part, part two. But me being stupid, I've changed my mind on a couple of things. I'm gonna add a few things to this tank. As some of you know, I'm gonna try and break the mold a bit with this bike and make it different to all the other Enfield bobbers that I've done. Although they have all got slight differences, every single one of them, whether it be color, or slightly different shape, dummy oil tank, whatever, they've all got very slight differences. But, you know, you'd have to have them all in a line to pick them out. <clears throat> uh, so this one, yeah, we want to go down sort of a different route with this one. A more of a, more of a vintage look, or veteran if you want to call it that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll come up with another idea. So, yes, I'm going to break this into three parts and you'll see where I'm going to go with it in part three. Anyway, <clears throat> that's the end of part two. <laughs> Cheers for watching, guys. See you in part three when we do some silly things to this tank. Cheers, guys. Take care. <laughs>